Welcome to today's edition of Men of Eternity. My name is Reverend Kinsley, and I'm here to bring you the word of the Lord. Enjoy this word while you relax wherever you are, in your family home, if you're at work, wherever you are. Relax and enjoy this message. Amen. This message is going to bless your life. This message will give you one key of enjoying the blessings God has purchased for us in Christ Jesus. I know this message will quicken your faith in the Lord. And I know that this message will bring you to the place of greatness in Jesus name. Amen. So my title for today is labor to rest, labor to rest. You see in the Christian faith, amen, there's so many uh, mysteries in the kingdom of God. Amen. When Jesus was speaking to the apostles, he said, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom. He did not say the key or a key. He said the keys. Amen. So there are a lot of keys. There are a lot of mysteries in the kingdom of God. And each mystery has certain doors it opens for us. Amen. And with these keys, when these doors are open, we were able to enter into these doors and enjoy the blessings and the power and the favor of God. Amen. Rightfully, as a Christian, uh, you possess all things. If you have Christ, you have all things. Amen. If you have Christ, you have all blessings, all favor, all anointing, healing is yours, power is yours, um, glory is yours, uh, excellence. So every good thing from the Lord is yours. Amen. But we need this keys of the kingdom, the keys of the spirit. Amen. To be able to um, 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 bring into manifestation. Amen. Bring into manifestation all these blessings that we have which are already in the realm of the spirit. Amen. So this is the reason why it is needful. It is important that we study the word of God. We meditate on the word. We pray so that we'll be able to know these keys. And with these keys, we'll be able to draw this spiritual blessing, this spiritual great anointing, power, favor, glory that God has given to us in Christ. We'll be able to draw them into the physical world and have um, a good experience in this world that we are in. So my message today is um, one of these keys. It's, it's going to show you one of these keys in walking in the blessings of God. And I pray that the Lord will open your understanding, open your mind, so that this message will have great impact in your life. And this message will show you something you never knew in Jesus' name. Amen. So like I said, the title of my message today is Labor to Rest. Labor to Rest. Now. I will go straight away, straight to my uh, scripture for this lesson. It's found in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. Hebrews is one of the most powerful books in the, of the Bible. Um, it's also full of mysteries and codes. Amen. And without the Spirit of God, no matter how long or how effective you read the book of Hebrews, if you don't have the Spirit of God, it will be very difficult for you to understand. So I urge you that anytime you want to study the book of Hebrews, you pray and ask Holy Spirit to help you and show you the mysteries in this book. Amen. So in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verses number 11. Hebrews chapter 4, verses number 11. It says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man should fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, the Bible says that we should labor to enter into the rest. Amen. We should labor to enter into the rest, that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief that means that amen that um, it's not everyone who will be able to enter into the rest amen except those who labor is those who labor is only those who labor they are the ones who will be able to enter into the rest amen and the bible is saying that if we do not labor to enter into this rest we will fall through unbelief amen we will fall through unbelief. It is very important that we need to know what the scripture is talking about. Amen. Because there, there is, there is, there is a, a warning here that if one refuses to labor to enter into the rest, he will fall through unbelief. Now the question is, what is this rest? Amen. What is this rest? 
Now, in the same book of Hebrews, chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verses number 3, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 3, it says, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise that God did rest, God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Verse 5. And in this place again, if they shall enter my rest. Now, the Bible says that. When God created all things in the book of Genesis, the Bible says God rested. Amen. God rested from everything that he did. Amen. Now, when the Bible is talking about rest, he's talking about getting to the place where you are also not working. Amen. Now, when God rested, amen, when God rested, he ceased from doing any other work. Amen. He did not do anything. After the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, so the day he created man, after creating man, God entered into his rest. Amen. Now, I need to know that when the Bible says God rested, it is not because God got tired. Amen. God does not get tired. Amen. Now, the rest that God entered was the rest that whatever he wanted to do, he finished it. So God rested because he finished what he wanted to do. God did not rest because he was tired. Amen. He rested because he finished what he wanted to do. Everything was perfect. Amen. There was nothing to add to it anymore. Amen. The Bible said that God saw what he had created and it was good. So everything was perfect. Amen. A man of God always gives this example. He says like a painter paints um, a picture. Amen. And after painting the picture, the picture is so complete and perfect that if he should add another stroke of brush. Amen. On this paint, uh, on this picture, it was spot the whole thing. Amen. So the 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 the, the, the painter rests from painting not because he cannot go, he cannot uh, paint more, or not because he's tired, but because the picture is complete, everything is perfect. It's just like a lawyer says, "I rest my case." Amen. When the lawyer says, "I rest my case," he's not trying to say, "I don't have anything to say." He has more to say, but he has made his point. He's done with making his point, and he's done explaining his point. So there's no need to go, um, go on talking and making, giving more explanation about what he has already said. Amen. So when the Bible says God rested, it is it is because God completed and finished His work, and this is the rest that we have. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter four, Hebrews chapter four, verse nine, Hebrews chapter four, verse nine says. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. So as people of God, there is a rest. Oh, are you with me? There is a rest given unto us that we must enter. Amen. As God rested on the seventh day, when God rested on the seventh day, he also prepared a certain rest for his people. Remember, God created us in his image. So if God needs to rest, amen. If God needs to, if God God had to enter into rest, amen. And it's one of the natures of God to enter into rest, amen. And since God God created man in his image, it is also important and needful that man who should enter into a rest, amen. So the Bible said in the Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9, it says, There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. So there is a rest every child of God must enter into. And that's when the Bible says in the verse 11, it says, Let us therefore because there is a rest for us to enter the bible says let us therefore hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 let us therefore labor to enter into this rest there is a rest for us to enjoy so it is our duty to labor to enter into this rest amen and i said this rest amen it is a rest of complete um, a rest is a rest of um what do you, what do you, how do you how do you put it now everything is done amen everything is complete the works of god is finished our duty is to enter into what god has finished and enjoy them that is a rest 
Remember when Christ was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That means that I am done. The work is complete. Everything is done. So Christ finished the work for us. This is very important. We need to understand as believers. When we are talking about Sabbath, this is the Sabbath. This is where Sabbath comes in. When we are talking about Sabbath, it is not necessarily a day that we take to rest or a day we take to rest that we will not do anything. Under the old covenant, it was a day that the God gave to them to rest on that particular day, not working. Amen. And that thing that God asked them to do, that resting God asked them to rest on a particular day was a picture of the true rest God was bringing through Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus Christ came, Jesus Christ gave us the true rest. What is this rest? The rest of not doing anything by your strength. The rest of not doing anything with your own understanding. The rest of not doing anything with your own energy. But rather, accepting what I have done and enjoy it. So Christ said it is finished on the cross because every work that God asked him to come and do, he completed it. God first completed his own work. Amen. And now when Christ also came, he completed his own work. So when Christ calls us to enter into the kingdom of God, he calls us into enter, he calls us to enter into the place of rest. Why? Because he has finished everything. Amen. It's like I buy a house, I finish it, I put everything you will need, food, water every gadget electronic equipment you need everything you need even your clothes i buy a new set of clothes for you and i ask you to just move in now when you move in you are not going to move in and go th start thinking of where to get money to buy um furniture where to get money to buy certain gadgets and certain things you need i've already finished finishing the house so yours is to enter into the house and have fun and enjoy it. And this is what Christ has done for us. He finished the work. And this is the rest that we are supposed to enter. We are supposed to enter into the rest of Christ. Where we do not by our own strength try to gain the favor of God. With our own strength try to gain a blessing. With our own strength try to do something. But rather rely on what Christ has done. And labor. I'm going to show you how to labor. Amen. Now, if we are, how can we labor and still be in rest? That's a question. The moment you got born again, you entered into the rest. When you got born again, you entered into the rest. You entered into the finished work of Christ. By Christ Jesus, you are righteous. By Christ Jesus, you are healed. By Christ Jesus, you are blessed. By Christ Jesus, you have all these things. So, you have entered into rest the moment you get born again. You have entered into the finished work of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ died and resurrected, every good thing you will need in this life, he gave it to you. Amen. And this is the rest the Bible is talking about. We must labor to enter into this rest. We must labor to enter into the finished works of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has finished the work on our behalf. So I don't need to do something to become righteous. Amen. I need to accept Jesus Christ's righteousness. I don't need to do something to become blessed. I need to accept the blessing of God. Amen. I don't need, need to do something to, for God to favor me. I just need to accept the favor God has placed on me through Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't need to do something to be healed. I need to accept the healing Jesus Christ purchased for me. This is the rest that I was talking about. But before you can enter into this rest and enjoy this rest, before you can enjoy the healing, the blessing, the favor, the anointing, the power, and whatever good thing God has purchased for us in Jesus Christ, or before you can enjoy it, you must labor. Amen. Now, I want to show you something. In the same book of Hebrews chapter 4, verses number um, 3, I'm reading again. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 3 says, For we which have believed do enter into rest now so the only way to enter into the rest is to believe believe let us therefore labor to enter into the rest amen we should labor to enter into the rest now how do we labor 
by believing. Because believing is the only way to enter into the rest. Amen. Now, the question is, how do we believe? Let us look at the book of Romans. The book of Romans. The book of Romans. Chapter number 10. Chapter number 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses number 14. Romans chapter 10. Verses number 14. It says, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Now, he is asking a question. How can people believe in Jesus Christ if... How can they call? He said, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? So, Paul is saying, how can someone call upon Jesus Christ if they don't believe in Jesus Christ? Then he said, how then can they also believe if they have not heard of him? That means that before we can believe to enter into the rest, we must hear the word of God. It is only when we hear the word of God that we receive the faith and believe to enter into the rest. Amen. So when we read the book of Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, it says, So then faith come by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Now listen. Before you can enter into the rest, the Bible says you must labor. Amen. Now, the Bible is also telling us that before you can enter into the rest, you must believe. And the same Bible is telling us that before you can believe, you must hear the word of God. That means that before you can enter into the place of rest, you must hear the word of God and believe the word of God before you can enter into the rest. So when the Bible says we should labor to enter into the rest of God, it's saying that we should labor to hear the word of God. Amen. We should labor to hear the word of God. Now the question, how do we hear the word of God? There are two major ways of hearing the word of God. By studying the Bible or listening to messages preaching, preached by the servants of God. Because he said, how would they believe on him of whom they've, they've not heard? Then he goes to say, how would they hear without a preacher? How would they hear the word of God without a preacher? So you can hear the word of God by through a preacher, one. And the second thing is that you can hear the word of God by studying the word of God for yourself. So when the Bible says we should labor, the Bible is telling us that we should get to the point of spending time with the word of God, meditating on the word of God, so that we can hear the word of God and have the faith and belief to enter into the rest. Amen. So the labor is studying scripture. That's the first labor. Now, we must labor by studying the scripture. The more we study the scripture, the more our faith is building. The more we grow in faith. And as we grow in faith, we believe to enter to the rest. Because remember, the scripture says you must believe to enter to the rest. If you don't believe, you cannot enter to the rest. Amen. The Bible says that let labor, therefore, to enter to the rest. Least any man fall through unbelief. So with that belief or if you enter if you without belief you will fall and, and not enter into the rest and how do you overcome unbelief by making sure that you are walking in faith how do you walk in faith by the word of god you must hear the word of god assuming you are you have you don't have rest in the area of your finances if you don't have the rest in your own finances what do you need to do you get messages and preaching in books about men of god who have preached topics on finances and you begin to study them meditate on them listen to them and read the scripture on the area of finances as you are doing that you are hearing the word of god as you hear the word of god on that area of finances your faith will be built and you will begin to know the keys in the kingdom of God concerning finances, then as you put them into practice, you have entered into the rest. And this is the reason why a lot of people are, are praying to God several times. They pray about a certain need and they are not getting answers because they do not have faith. They have no head. Amen. They have no head from the word of God. And therefore, there is no faith in them concerning whatever they are praying. A lot of Christians pray without faith. 
because they are not praying with the word of God. They are not praying. They do not stand the word of God before they enter to prayer. They just pray amiss, pray hoping that it will be answered without faith. We must labor. Amen. Prayer is good. Amen. In fact, that is the second way of labor. The first way to labor is to study the word of God. Also, get preachings, messages of men of God and listen to it. That's the first way of labor. That is, you must labor by hearing the word of God. And you can hear the word of God through a preacher or through studying the Bible for yourself. Now, the second labor, amen, the second labor to build your faith to enter into the rest is also in Jude, amen. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. By ye, beloved, burden up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, Remember we said, okay, that it is true faith will enter into the rest. Amen. Now, true faith will enter into the rest. And we said that faith comes by hearing the word of God. The first key of labor is to hear the word of God. And how do you hear the, with the word of God? By listening to preachings of anointed servants of God, true servants of God, and also reading scripture and reading books, books written by anointed servants of God, true men of God. That is the first key of labor. The second key of labor to grow in faith is to pray in the Holy Ghost. Especially speaking in tongues. Amen. So when the Bible says we should labor to enter into the rest, the Bible is talking about spending time to study the word of God and spending time in prayer. This is the labor we have been called to do. As we study the word of God, we build our faith. And as we build our faith, we enter into the rest of God. And as we pray also, we enter into the rest of God. Let me show you something in the same book of Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. I will end very soon. Hebrews chapter 4. Let me show you something. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse number 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Now, Paul, we men of God believe that Hebrews was written by Paul, and I also believe that. Amen. Now, Paul was saying that. The message that we are hearing, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of Jesus, the message of grace that we are hearing is the same message God preached to the um, Israelites when they were in the wilderness. But the Bible said that they did not get profit, they did not benefit from the message they had because they did not mix it with faith. So that is what I said in the verse. They said, For we which believe do enter the rest. So the only way to enter into rest is to believe. And the only way you can believe is to hear the word of God and also to pray in the Holy Ghost. And this is the labor the scripture is talking about. How do we labor to enter into the rest? First of all, we must take the word of God. And second, we must pray in the Holy Ghost. This is how we labor to enter into the rest. If you do not study the word of God for yourself, beloved, and pray in the Holy Ghost, you cannot enter into the rest. Maybe you need healing. If you need healing and you are not getting healing, it means in the area of healing, you have not entered to the rest. If you need, if, if you are lacking, for, if you are in financial need, you don't have your needs met, you are always lacking something. You are always not getting enough to eat, enough to take off yourself, enough to take off your family. It means you have not entered into rest in the area of your finances. What do you do? Labor to enter into that rest. Labor to enter into the area of your finances. Labor to enter into the rest of the area of your finances. Labor to enter into the rest in the area of healing, labor to enter into the rest in the area of anointing. How do you do that? By hearing the word of God and praying in the Holy Ghost. And how do you hear the word of God? First, listen to anointed preachers, servants of God, true men of God, messages, the preachers God has inspired them to preach. Also, read books written by anointed men of God. As you read, you are building your faith and also, above all, the Bible. While you are listening to preachings and you are reading books, right, madam? This book, the Bible, is the first one. Read the Bible to build your faith, 
to enter into the rest. And second, pray in the Holy Ghost to enter into the rest. This is how you labor to enter into rest. Amen. If you don't labor, you cannot enter into the rest God has for you. Amen. Beloved, I want you to know that the kingdom of God is full of blessings. But this blessings of God that God has given to us through Jesus Christ does not automatically come upon us. Amen. We are born again. God has blessed us. We are filled with the power of God. We have all things given unto us. But it does not automatically come upon us unless we labor in the word of God and we labor in prayer. We will not enjoy the blessings of God. Beloved, this is the message that the Lord asked me to bring to you today. And I believe that this message has opened your mind and has opened your understanding. I've been, I've been telling people that we don't read Bible so that God will love us. No, we read Bible to know the things of God. We read Bible to build our own faith so that we can partner with God and enjoy the blessings of God. That's why we read the Bible. We don't read the Bible so that God will bless us. We don't read the Bible so that God will like us. Oh, I like this man, servant. He likes reading the Bible. I like this man. I like this woman. He likes reading the Bible, so I like him. No. We read the Bible for our own benefits, not for God to love us or to like us. God already loves you, whether you read the Bible or not. Amen. Whether you read the Bible or not, God already loves you. Even when you are a sinner, God loves you. But the reading the Bible only affects you. It does not affect God. It affects you. It changes your thinking. It changes your, the way you act. It changes the way you talk. It builds your faith so that you'll be able to walk with God and enjoy the blessings of God. That is why we read the Bible. And that is the reason why we must labor by studying the scripture, meditating on the scripture, and we must labor in prayer to enter into the rest of God. Otherwise, like the scripture says, we will fall through unbelief and we will be like the Israelites who died on the wilderness and did not see the blessing of God because they did not believe the word of God. Amen. Beloved, I beg of you, begin to spend time with the Bible. Read the Bible every day. Meditate, pray. If you don't understand, ask God to teach you and help you understand the Bible. Amen. And also get preachings of anointed men of God, true servants of God, and listen to them and be blessed by their preaching. Amen. Read spiritual books, Christian, good Christian books, anointed Christian books written by anointed true men of God. Read it and you'll be blessed. Amen. And also above all, pray. Pray every day. And as you pray, you begin to bring yourself into the place of rest where you will enjoy every work that God has done for you through Jesus Christ on the cross. This is the end of my message. And I pray that this message will open your understanding. I pray that this message will quicken your faith in God, quicken your spirits and help you enter into deeper relationship and intimacy with the Lord God. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. My name is Reverend Kingsley, and this program is called Men of Eternity. Amen. Beloved, we on Facebook, Men of Eternity. I want you to follow our page on Facebook, Men of Eternity. We are also on YouTube, Men of Eternity. Subscribe to our channel, Men of Eternity. Beloved, share this message to your loved ones, okay? When you receive the link, share the link. Share the Facebook link. Share the YouTube link. And let someone also listen to this message and be blessed. Through your sharing of this link and sharing of this um, message, you are also doing evangelism. You are also bringing the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ to other people who do not have it. And the Lord will bless you for doing that. The Lord keep you and the Lord watch over you. I pray that may the angels of God watch over you wherever you are. May you excel in whatever you find yourself doing. And may your hands experience only blessings. Whatever thing that hinders the blessing of God in your life, I command it to wither away. I command it to be broken. Every case, every bondage, I command it to be broken out of your life and begin to express the blessings of God in Jesus' name. We shall meet again, God willing, but until then, walk in the blessings and the favor of God. Peace be unto you. Amen.